Hi, and welcome back to Target Transfers podcast, the podcast for garment decorators. We're giving you lots of tips and tricks and interviews to make your life easier, hopefully. So my name's Andy. I'm joined by Molly today. Hello. And we're going to be talking everything localization. Do you understand how much business there is on your doorstep? So there is so much more than you could possibly imagine. I'm going to show you or talk to you about what the opportunity is. So a lot of you uh, joined me a couple of weeks ago for a live St. Patrick's Day event. So, and it was basically, I was talking about how much business there is for St. Patrick's Day. So it's a bit of an untapped resource sometimes, but the opportunity to sell one-off t-shirts or to sell promo t-shirts to businesses for every occasion. So- Pubs and things like that. Yeah, and this, yeah. so if, if, for instance, this year St. Patrick's Day falls on a Friday. So that's perfect. So mm -hmm. more people are gonna turn out for St. Patrick's Day. It is also the Six Nations grand finale weekend. So the next following day Andy's on the Saturday. Topic. So, <laughs> so basically, if anyone that doesn't like rugby, uh, it doesn't matter because it's a business opportunity for you. But basically, <laughs> the grand finale of the Six Nations means that all of the six teams play back to back on one day. So, okay. so on a Saturday, you've got three games in a row and it's the day after St. Patrick's Day. So it's a double St. Patrick's Day weekend. So have you blocked that day out in your calendar? Ob obviously, obviously I have, okay, yeah. yeah. So checking. it means that sell St. Patrick's Day, you essentially get to sell twice as many because uh -huh. they're gonna need them for the Friday and the Saturday because everyone is watching the rugby. It's a Guinness Six Nations anyway, so you're gonna be drinking Guinness. Oh my God. So it's a it's a win win for garment decorators because there's a big opportunity uh -huh. and it's really easy. So I did a live when I explained how to sort of standardise designs so you don't have yeah. to have lots and lots of designs, you can just do uh, standardised design, sell it to every single business because they're not going to see each other. It just has to be simple St. Patrick's Day, maybe a pint, a Guinness, something on the front that's themed mm -hmm. and then you could essentially get that to a lot of businesses. But what I wanted to demonstrate was just how much you could do that on your doorstep because obviously if you go and selling to a pub, especially if it's an independent, it's, you can't just drive up halfway across the country, pitch it and hope you get it. So you, want, you kind of want to localise this stuff. Um, so the demonstration I gave was for Braintree. So we're based in Braintree in Essex, which mm -hmm. isn't far from Stansted for anyone that's not familiar. And I just went onto Google when I searched pubs and within a 10 minute walk of our innovation centre here where we're recording from, there was 17 pubs. 17? 17, and that's not including like social clubs or anything like that. Wow, okay. So my argument was that if there's 17 pubs, let's say an average of six people work in there, so yep. two shifts, three on each, and that's probably conservative. Some of these will have 10, some of them will only you might have two. Yeah. But I'll average out, say, six. Mm -hmm. two, and there's two day, two day weekend for it, the Friday and the Saturday. It's the actual St. Patrick's Day. Back to back, day. not going to wash those not, in between. No, you are going to wash them. Oh, exactly, you are going to yes, wash you're them. You're not going to wash them, yes, exactly. You need, you need double. one for each. Yeah, yeah. And actually, on the way in, this is a completely coincidental, uh, one of the pubs on my drive in, it was actually doing a 15th of March, St. Patrick's Day meal, because they obviously oh. figured out the Friday and the Saturday were more of a drinking day. So, But they still wanted to have a St. Patrick's Day stew for people. Okay. So actually, it was a three-day uh, event, event for them yeah. and they might have even gone in through to the Thursday at that point I mean why not <laughs> it's carrot going it's a week's worth of a weekend and probably you should be wearing them the previous weekend to promote the fact that you should be coming the following weekend if you're doing it right all about pre-promotion exactly yep. so 17 so it worked out let's say 70 or 17 pubs mm -hmm. and you did say that six people working there on, that, on each day uh -huh. 204 t-shirts I thought you were going to ask me to work that out no, and then I'm very worry. relieved <laughs> So it's 204 T-shirts, uh -huh. um, which if you uh, sold them for £12 each, which isn't unreasonable, and that, it's kind of about thing, which works about sort of £7 profit per T-shirt. Mm -hmm. It's going to give you a revenue of £2,448. Wow, okay. Just for not even getting in a car. Just off your doorstep. Just off your doorstep. And obviously you can expand out further into the villages and the large town as a large, or if you're living in a larger town, then you can really make an absolute killing so it could potentially be like I don't know 25 30 pubs within a walking distance of you yeah so it got a really good response to that we saw lots of St Patrick's Day stuff come through because people are oh, yeah that's brilliant and when it pitched the business got the business and now they've got mm -hmm. the transfers printed and they can do this and you can repeat this throughout the rest of the year so there's so many opportunities to do this so like St Patrick's Day is one that's a good one Actually, on the following day from the Six Nations Day, it was Mother's Day. Mm -hmm. So why not have Mother's Day T-shirts? I mean, so why we'll, not? We'll pre-promote the weekend before Mother's Day T-shirts. In April, was St. George. <laughs> Don't forget to get your mum yeah. card. <laughs> yeah. April, you got St. George's Day. 
uh, May, you've got the coronation, which if anyone... That's wants, another whole topic. It's a whole other topic. There is a free... We have secured the logo, the official logo, and put it onto EasyView, though. So if you want to use it, that's a, that's a kind of a, a sidebar. But we Legally. Have, we have, <laughs> we'll leave. If you want the proper logo, with the proper dimensions, printed nicely, we can sort that out for you. It's just under stock images. So there's so many opportunities, and you can do this throughout the whole of the year. There's always going to be sporting events. Yeah. There's always going to be something to have a T-shirt for these businesses for. So if you once you start to get one job in, you can essentially create another revenue stream for your business that you can kind of go back for probably like at least 10 out of every 12 months of the year. Yeah. And Christmas, you could really go for it, things that's, like that. Yeah, you'd have probably three or four designs per stuff shirt, wouldn't you? Yeah. Like, that's mad. So it's a really easy win. Um, so I wanted to kind of build upon that, kind of for everyone that's listening and go a bit more long form. And, it, mm -hmm. and just to kind of get everyone to start thinking about what the real opportunity for local businesses, because so many of the people that come in here that we've interviewed talk about how they start locally and they just grow and grow and expand out like a, like a circle expanding out to get more business in. I think the majority of the people we speak to start like that. Yeah, and people like to buy locally, they like to buy from friendly faces they can go back to time and time again. Yeah. So I've used Braintree as the example again. Mm -hmm. And Braintree is not a big town. And I know that a lot, of, a lot of people won't be familiar with Braintree unless you've come to visit us. But I wanted to, I'm using Braintree as the example okay. to demonstrate um, if there's an, that much opportunity here, how much opportunity there must be for everyone listening. In the bigger bit, towns, yeah. yeah. So I've got a, like a bit of a quiz for Molly today. So you're going to try and Ooh, guess, okay. guess right. the size of the opportunity, basically. Okay. So to start off with, because I know that everyone's not familiar with Braintree, and I'm well aware that lots of people listening will probably like, when I said about 17 pubs, they're like, yeah, 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 it's not, not for me. Mm -hmm. Or there's not that much opportunity for me. Uh, but once you get into the numbers, there is that much opportunity. So first is... I'd just like to make it clear, I do not live in Braintree. I work no. in Braintree. So if I get these wrong, yes, <laughs> I'm just exactly, saving yeah. myself in, in advance. So if you had to guess, if you had to rank all the towns and cities in the UK, where do you think that Braintree would rank in terms of largest? So let's say lo no, number one is obviously going to be London. It's the largest city or town in the UK. But just to city or town because city, they're different. It, it can be it can be either. There's a so lot this more. Is looping, this is adding all adding okay. all together. Well, how many are there total? Have you got that number? I don't know. Okay, I, I, I was going to I was gonna average at like seventy five yeah. percent. Um, let's say for argument's sake, there there were a hundred mm -hmm. towns slash cities in the UK. I'd probably put Braintree somewhere on the seventy mark. I'd say it's quite small. It's quite a small town and there's yeah. a lot of opportunity. Like three still... quarters down from the top. Okay, so it's your way out. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so that is, but that's important because I wanted to demonstrate to everyone that was listening, be like, yeah, it's probably easy for you to How watch far them. out am I? So Braintree is the 243rd largest town or city in the UK. So there's 242 Jeez. towns or cities that are larger than Braintree. So in theory, the opportunities I'm going to talk about today, there's wow. 242 places that are bigger, with bigger opportunities. Okay. Because most of the yeah, spread no, across the like, uh, businesses of how many percentage of these types of jobs mm -hmm. there will be is true of in kind of consistently across every um, town. Yeah. So it means that majority of people listening will have living in a bigger town or city or will be close to a bigger town or city than Braintree. So if yeah. there's this much opportunity here, how much opportunity there could be for everyone else. And 243 as well, that's not just like there's an extra three or four pubs. That could potentially double or triple or... Yeah. That's massive. So there's is a really big opportunity for everyone. Uh, and this and you could probably pick up a lot of work just without even getting in the car. Another pro. So that's, that's kind of what I wanted to... Uh, Saving on fuel. Yeah. So the next question then... Is how many jobs do you think there are in Braintree? This is can be this covers everything. So, um, not just like the type of customers that we might our customers might sell to, but just all jobs okay. in Braintree. Um, and this is full and part time put together. So this can include like working in a shop and things like that. How many people are in Braintree? Um, I don't know, ten thousand. There are fifty three thousand jobs in Braintree. <laughs> See what I mean? Way out. So that's what, that's what I mean. <laughs> I was going to say five, and then I was like, oh no, because in my head I was counting around all the shops in Freeport going, no, that's at least a thousand, so we'll up it a bit. But yeah. 
So 53,000 employment opportunities in Branchy, 35,000 are full-time, 18,000 are part-time. I mean... Because once you start to... I mean, that does include things like there's a, lot, there's a big test going to Big Sainsbury's, obviously, things like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. Do you think the part-time workers, though, have more to account for when it comes to things like that? Because you think restaurant and bar workers, you do get some full-time, but majority of them will be part-time will or be, on yeah. shift work. So it's more... Would it be more the part-time workers that you'd need to angle towards for that? Because like, we're full-time, yeah. and I know that we work in the garment industry, but if we were in an office, would, would offices do St. Patrick's? I mean, they might they, do. They probably wouldn't, but they probably would do... Charity things. Uh, they probably do coronation stuff, things yeah. like that, or a World Cup. But And I'll get into the specifics of each industry as well. We've got, so I've got some quizzes, okay. quiz questions for you on that, because the opportunity, even if you take out office work, which, yeah, let's be honest... Is a chunk. Is, is yeah, which is actually is an opportunity, but it's not a. It's not as easy to sort of quantify for everyone listening how much of an opportunity. I mean, like yeah. the majority of offices actually probably would give people staff like t-shirts and hoodies with promo stuff on them, even if it's just going to an event. Most businesses go to a trade show or multiple trade shows, and you want to be and branded. Then you would put t-shirts and hoodies. So actually, probably. Apart from, say, like, I don't know, some of the bigger chains, like, let's be honest, like, everyone that's listening is probably not going to get the McDonald's and the Tesco uh, biz businesses. No. So I'm not, not encouraging people to try and go to Braintree McDonald's and pitch to do their T-shirts because uh, there probably is, I don't know, 30 or 40 people that work in that McDonald's. Yeah. But I'm just going to be realistic about some of the other jobs. There's still the opportunity. Okay. But the re most of the restaurants, yeah. you could, if you had the right contacts, you could... Um, pitch to something we do 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 quite a lot of uh transfer work for some of the bigger restaurant chains yeah so that is possible but we're going to kind of concentrate on ones that are easy access and kind of more brain tree specific but the principles will be the same for everyone okay but yeah so brain tree is the 243rd largest town or city in the uk and there's still 53,000 people working either full or part-time so they imagine the opportunity for in lots of bigger places how many cheat sheets have you got I there? I'm so, <laughs> slightly scared. So, so basically, now we're going to get into... I've, I've taken out the ones that I don't think are relevant. I thought you were going to say that you didn't think I'd get. <laughs> no. But that's all of them. Well, no, you'd have to can take some guessing. But um, now okay. we're going to go by, like, industries. So right. these are essentially how many people work in this particular industry in Braintree specifically. So we're keeping it to Braintree and okay. Braintree District. So, so this will cover slightly total. bigger than Braintree Town, but mostly it's mostly just... Braintree and a couple of villages and things around that. Anything that's right. covered by Braintree District Council, I guess, technically. Okay. And this is taken from um, census and national statistics. So it's up-to-date data as of mm -hmm. like a year or two ago, I think. So the numbers are still pretty on the money. Okay. So the first one is manufacturing. So manufacturing is something that probably everyone listening could uh, make an approach for, unless it's like a big... I don't know, maybe a big car plant, something like that. Yeah. Which there isn't one in Braintree anyway. Is there not? Um... No, there's no, like, there's not <laughs> many, like, most of the manufacturing here is when target transfers to the manufacturer in Braintree, for instance. But we have lots and lots of people making transfers each day, which we would obviously kit our own stuff out yep. with. But there's lots of businesses like there's uh, builders, there's builders, there's plumbers, there's all kinds of manufacturing in Braintree. I mean, there used to be a... Um, oh, so we're talking trades as well? Yeah, so we're okay. talking, like, for instance, there used to be a company in the building next to us that made, like, restaurant kitchens, things like that, anything that could be manufactured. Oh, we're so, going niche, okay. But that, but, that means, um, but that means that but all of those companies are not going to be doing, uh, getting their their staff gear at a national level. True. So their opportunity is, is big. To just go and knock on the door and go, hello. Ex exactly, yeah. yeah. So how many okay. pe people do you think... There, this is this is not necessarily the population of Braintree because you could come. Like, neither of us live in Braintree, but we work in Braintree. This is purely like jobs <laughs> in Braintree. Okay. <laughs> okay. So how many manufacturing jobs do you think there are in Braintree? Um, okay, so if there's fifty three thousand total jobs in Braintree, mm -hmm. I would hazard a guess that around twenty twenty five percent of that would be manufacturing. So. 10,000? Not quite, but there is other like other niches which are similar. But there so there are 5,000 people employed in manufacturing in Braintree. Okay. But that's all of them would potentially have workwear. As I'm thinking we've got the tile place over the road, you've got 
what yeah, else is on that industrial estate? Like, there's like on three an, or four We're different... on an industrial park and there's an even bigger industrial park on the other side of town, which is only a Didn't five minute drive. So there's there's sign manufacturers, there's all sorts going on. Yeah. Um, it could just be like any the tiniest little component part of something bigger. There's always medical devices, medical instruments, all sorts. Everything has to be made. Exactly. So there's 5,000 manufacturing jobs. Mm -hmm. And the majority of these are going to want to have workwear, branded workwear. Yep. But it's not just like 5,000 is 5,000 people. Each person could need three to five t-shirts they could need two to three hoodies they could need trousers shorts so you're bags, quadrupling hats. every so each person. person could potentially need 10 items of branded clothing yeah so just in the manufacturing industry we could say that fifty thousand things need branding probably every year mm -hmm. so fifty thousand. even you know so they're potentially just that this is just in braintree you remember as well yeah and Those numbers just, are staggering. There's yeah. a, that's a lot more than I thought you were going to say. Yeah. So that and remember, yeah. So that's always the thing. It's always important to remember. That's how. That's and this is going to be the same opportunity. The percentage of people. So that's about ten percent of people. Okay. Of those jobs, the whole of jobs in Braintree are manufacturing. Yeah. And that number is actually about average for the UK. So most towns and cities have about ten percent of their jobs are in manufacturing. Right. Okay. That's interesting. So every single person who's listening, that number is going to roughly apply to them. Yeah. So if you're in a bigger town, there could be 10,000 people working in manufacturing and they all need 10 things. These numbers, are really, they, they, yeah. these numbers are really add up. So this industry is quite a bit smaller, mm -hmm. but it just goes to show how many niches there are okay. within towns and places like that. So this is very niche. This is water, the water supply industry. In, in Braintree, and this mm. is covering sewerage, waste management, and remediation activities. So quite a bit smaller than manufacturing, but still an opportunity. Mm, 1,000? So there's only 450 people working in that industry, so okay. it's a bit smaller. But again, these could be people who are actually going on site, fixing sewage problems, waste management problems. So again, they need to be branded, yep. they always need to be branded, and they're going to probably have a t-shirt or polo, trousers, a bag, uh, a jacket, a sweater, a hat. Yeah. So again, it could be... A whole wardrobe. Even in something as small as like sewage and waste management, it could be potentially, I don't know, 4,000 items that need to be branded just in Braintree. Yeah, even if you set your focus to one or two of those specific niches and yeah. said, that's my goal for the next six months, that's a, that's a decent-sized contract. Keep you busy yeah. printing one of those. Yeah, it would. That would actually. Yeah. Okay. What's next? So next I'm enjoying is this. construction. Ooh. So this is. Does that not come under manufacturing? Doesn't even come under builders. manufacturing. Oh, so this God. is in okay. addition to manufacturing. Um, so this is construction, and there's a lot of construction going on everywhere in the UK. There's lots of housing sites being built. There's a yeah. big one on my way in into work. I think there's two or three actually on my way in. A lot of buildings. There's one very, right. just on the outskirts of Braintree. That, um, it could be just building in general, working on buildings. And the bigger cities are going to, this is really going to be amplified. Like yeah. I drove into Cambridge the other day and there's like so many giant cranes as you drive in. There's so much construction work at the moment. It's one of, always one of the biggest industries for the UK. It never slows down, does it? No. So how many construction jobs do you think there are? Um, ballpark figure based off of the manufacturing mm -hmm. one, which I would assume it would be similar, if not more. I don't know, 4,000? 6,000? 4,500. Oh. Be first instinct. Okay. So, yeah, so between manufacturing and construction, yep. which in terms of what you, the way you'd pitch it and what products you give, you're looking at 9,500 people mm -hmm. employed in Braintree just in those two industries, Combined, which, yeah. as we discussed, could need 10 items quite easily. That doesn't even include the high vis. Didn't you mention the high vis? All the high vis they need to have. That's a whole other jacket, world. High vis jacket, high vis coat. Yeah all sorts of stuff you can put transfers onto all of those easily yeah and it's something that we know from previous discussions when we had san in not that long ago for yeah. her second episode on the podcast she was talking about one of their most recent orders for teas and it was in the construction, construction industry exactly, yeah. so it's not even like it's something that you'd have to convince them to buy they already want it it's just where do they yeah. get it from yeah 
So that's a again, it's another massive opportunity, and it's something you could standardize what you're doing. Yeah. It's, and it's not it's not over complicated stuff. The like I say, they want nicer stuff, but it's still going to be probably a left chest and a back print. It's not going to be hard stuff to do. It's stuff you could easily get through the work. But yeah, four and a half thousand people employed in construction in the 243rd largest town or city in the UK. Wow. So. Okay. So it's quite, again, big numbers, but still quite small in comparison mm -hmm. to a lot of the other towns and cities. So the next one, which I was, this is quite a big number actually, is wholesale and retail trade, repair of motor vehicles and motorcycles. So basically talking That's a big garage. number. It's bigger than construction and manufacturing. So we're talking anything like garage and like repair stuff like that. Eight and a half thousand. Close, 9,000 jobs in Braintree. Oh, okay. So there's lots of like repair centres and garages. Again, garages are a bit like pubs. Well, there's like there's five so within viewing distance exactly, of here, isn't yeah. there? There's a tyre place that behind us. It's true of everywhere. And all of those places, there's not that many, there doesn't tend to be that many changes of mm. um, garage. There's a few. Yeah. Like you might have like a Halfords and a Tread first, but not that many. It's always like, it's always like a skill that people can pick up or go and learn. Yeah. So again, every town has, and every village even has, might have multiple garages in it. Yeah, our, my local garage has, um, I noticed it the first time I went in there, they didn't have any branded clothing on at all. Yeah. And then the next couple of times I went back, they had just like fleeces. Um, yeah. Whenever I say that, it always reminds me of the episode that we had that discussion Kelly. with Kelly and the, <laughs> the granddad dog walker fleeces. <laughs> but that kind of, um, not bobbly, but like nice school one. fleece yeah. kind of thing. But they had like the um, embroidered patch on it with their logo and that's, you know, there's probably about five of them in a little local garage, yeah. but they still had their had their branding on. Yeah, so it's it's very easy, and with something like Ultracolor Max, where you only have to order one, it's mm -hmm. very easy to do lots of fours and fives. For one, yeah, exactly for one company. So it's, very, it's not even you don't even have to be worried about turning away the smaller places because you might pick up yeah. one garage of four and another one for twenty five if it's slightly bigger. All on one sheet. But the opportunity is is massive. Okay, that's interesting. Bigger than construction. I didn't expect mm. that. No. So the next one is transportation and storage. So I assume this is like... Random to put together. Like drivers. Well, there's quite a few like local delivery companies. So it could be any, any like white vans that do delivery, like independence. Storage or, though. I guess it's probably like um, storage units. So like if you're moving house, you might store your all your stuff in like a warehouse or you might get a unit to store it all in. Oh, I suppose that does come under transport. Yeah, yeah. okay. Um, bigger or smaller than construction? Sm this is smaller. 800? So 2,250 oh. people are employed in transportation storage in Braintree. I suppose that, that, that also includes so bus drivers, yeah. local delivery drivers, like... Yeah, yeah that's, but that's most probably. apart from like let's say maybe DPD and a couple of and FedEx, some of the mm. other changes, there's still a lot of opportunity for um, branding. Royal Mail with the uh, coronation on yeah, exactly, it. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. And most like buses are all done at a local level, so you probably could get into a lot of transport. Are they? I didn't know that. Yeah, I mean you've got you've got like stagecoach and companies yeah. like that, but I think a lot of it would probably be controlled. At a local level, be the, at the hub. Even yeah. if you're just doing like all the white vans that do like um, more ad hoc delivery stuff, mm -hmm. like specialized stuff, you could either. I mean, company that I was doing a one to one with yesterday, uh, they're getting a heat printing for lots of bits and pieces, but they are, or they already own a delivery company um, locally. Yeah. And they were uh, ordering transfers when they're in here and they would get picked. I think they had like 30 drivers or something like that. Okay. Yeah. So, I mean, they were doing their own. So, obviously, that opportunity is off the board. They'd, they'd taken it in house. But it's, an ex but again, it's an example, though, isn't it? If you might, if you have enough people, you might want to buy a heat press and do it yourself anyway. Yeah, that's a good point. Um, but there's lots of opportunity, lots of small businesses, and they're very easy to find. Literally, just yeah. go on to Google and be like, transportation near me, near me and you'll be, you'll be surprised at how many there are. Yeah. Okay, so this one, this one's probably a bit surprising actually, is this is anything that's professional, scientific and technical activities. So I'm not entirely sure, if I'm being honest, I'm not entirely <laughs> sure what that means. Um, but I think it's probably like, might come under like, a bit like manufacturing, but like um, something chemically. scientific, chemically, yeah. Got any universities around here? Um, Chemistry lab? 
Not that I don't. I don't think they would be included in. I don't think it, locally. I don't think there are no. Mm. But again, on the other industrial state, there's you know, there's you'd be surprised at how many like scientific, because it's probably cheaper than say Cambridge to have a um, a unit. Yeah. But you you know, you could fed it. In, but we're very close to uh, Stansted, which is one of the main hubs for sending stuff out. Um, sort of internationally that's medically done. Yeah, that's a good point. Um, you say it's a surprising number. Yeah, I thought so. Okay, um, let's go with one and a half thousand. So it's actually four and a half thousand. Really? Yeah. I mean, I'd, like I say, I'm not 100% sure what's included. We need specifications on what the job let's, roles are. Let's, let's say even a, a portion of that is... Uh, something that even if it's like say come back back around to they could be a business that needs to go to trade shows or exhibitions yeah. there's there's still going to be an opportunity for every single business or every every single company that has a business unit in an industrial park near you mm -hmm. is an opportunity i don't know why but i'm thinking of like scientists in the lab with the white coat on but that's not entirely you could brand those <laughs> You could brand those. They should all have a. They should all have a logo on them. They should all have their that. name on them. That sounds fun. Yeah, I mean, even like when my I, I live just outside of Branchy, but there was an industrial park that I go past, and there's like a scientific company. I don't know what they were doing, but they had loads of like pipettes and stuff out the other day. <laughs> they're putting. They look like just putting stuff into different bottles, but you know, I don't know what they were doing, but they were a scientific. They were company. pipetting away, and they were. The, you know, they were started work at. Must have started work at like half seven, so oh must have God. been important work that they were doing. Should have pulled over and been like, "Excuse me, would yeah. you like some branded coats?" So next up, um, I'm going to go with education. So this would include teachers, which, in all honesty, probably don't wear. They probably aren't going to wear branded stuff, but there will be Students? elements in that. Yeah, if you think about how okay. many people are going to be employed in education, for instance. Well, I don't know because teachers would wear. I know they wear like their own clothes yeah. day to day, but like they always wear like the PE kit, so they'd have like the hoodies. There would, would be like yes, yeah, stuff like that. But um, and if you think about how many, I guess as well, once we get to the number, do you want to take a guess at how many people are in education? So are we talking staff or are we talking pupils or what? This is the people employed in education, so we'd only right. be covering staff mm. and other education-based... 5,000? Exactly, 5,000, yeah. Yes! So you got one there. So if there's 5,000 people and, you know, and it's not one member of staff per student, uh -huh. yeah, imagine yeah. how many students... I mean, I don't have the number for how many students there Hashtag are. Hashtag leavers, free template on custom yeah. target transfers <laughs> com. Exactly. So there must be, I don't know, like 20, 30,000 yeah. at least people in education. We should do a localization local. podcast on leavers. That would be a good yeah. one. So, there's a, so let's say even if they go to off-site days or something... Yep. Even if you just say, well, that's the opportunity for... T that's how many people educating people. High visits this, this, for school trips? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, well, exactly, yeah, school trips. They probably would wear a branded top for a ski trip or an yeah. activities week or something where they're in... Mm -hmm. Weaving those, like, flags that they have to hold up <laughs> to make sure everyone follows them. Just do the flags for teachers. Brand them with the school badge. Yeah, exactly. So that's an, it's an opportunity, so it means that, that all of the school kit that comes with that many people in education yeah. must be pretty big. Clubs okay. as well, while we're on that topic, they all have, um, like you were saying about sports teams, yeah. they all have pe like PE kits that teachers would have. Um, there's so many, there's such a scope for, for stuff like that. Yeah. So next up, mm -hmm. uh, it's the last one we'll do for employee by job by industry. It's how many people are working in human health and social work activities? Employed oh, in social work I can imagine would be quite high. Mm. Um, higher or lower than teachers? Uh, higher. 7,000? 6,000 people. Oh, not far off. Employed okay. in human health and social work activities. Just in Braintree? Just in Braintree, which, as Mind we remember, me. is the 243rd largest town or city in the UK. When you say social work and health, do you mean, is there a hospital around here? So I think it would include... Doctors and it nurses. It might include and doctors and nurses, but I don't think there's actually a... Most of the big, the hospitals weren't probably is not near enough to be included in that. GPs, dentists, opticians. Possibly. Is that what, okay. But there's also like, um, I think there's like homes, you might put, for old people, there's a few yeah. of those dotted around Braintree. Elderly, Andy. Yeah, for the elderly, sorry. <laughs> for the old people. Old people. 
But they would all be, a lot of them would be independent or small chains. Yeah. That would, and they'd all need to have branded stuff on them to identify who the carer or who the worker is. So again, it's another mm. opportunity to yeah. pitch for work. I think quite often the homes are hidden a little bit as well because there's quite a few around where I live that just look like flats or a big house yes. and that you it's only when you see like the little sign out the front that says such and such home um or care facility or whatever they call yeah. them um that you go oh that that's that and yeah. they're all like you say small um locally independently run so i think you could probably walk past yeah. a handful uh, in a day if, if you tried yeah. you know and i don't i'm not aware of the one being here but even like i don't know a prison or something like that. We'll have lots of staff members that all need to have properly branded. I don't know where the nearest prison is from here. I don't know. I mean, hopefully we'll never have to find out. <laughs> <laughs> if we keep doing our jobs well, yeah, we'll be fine. But, but again, so there's lots of opportunity within that, even in the industries you're not aware of. Yeah. So okay. that was just to kind of run that back. So 243rd largest town or city in the UK we're in. Uh -huh. So this opportunity is bigger for nearly everyone that's listening, I'd imagine. Um, so there's 5,000 manufacturing jobs, which you could definitely all do with branded clothing and probably yes. like 10 items each. There's 450 people working in water supply and sewerage, 4,500 in construction, 9,000 in wholesale retail and retail trail for repair of motor, motor vehicles and motorcycles, 2,250 in transportation and storage. Um, there is 4,500 people in professional, scientific and technical activities, uh -huh. 5,000 education, 6,000 human health and social work activities. And I've even included arts, entertainment and recreation, which is 1,000, which probably to your question about how many people work in restaurants and cafes and stuff in Braintree. Yes. So some of that will be chain, <coughs> some of that will be accessible to you. So it's probably like half of that is probably uh -huh. independent. So again, two or three items per person at least, aprons, all the rest of it. That's the thing, even if you halve the numbers for independent companies, you're still tripling that number anyway for yeah. the amount of even T-shirts they're going to need. Um, and there's also, there is an additional one of accommodation and food service activities, which I think assume includes things like travel or premier in mm -hmm. um but probably includes like all the every takeaway so think about yeah. how many takeaways there are there's probably more takeaways than pubs local ones local oh that's ones. interesting yeah because there's i reckon there's probably if there's 17 pubs i can walk to from the office there's got to be 30 independent takeaways or restaurants at least yeah definitely like every pizza place every chinese place every indian place uh every kebab place you know they could all have branded t-shirts on yeah. So the, well, we actually, we did for um, Peddling Pizza. Do you remember that ultra colour yeah, design? That yeah. was one of my favourite customer examples that we used for a video. Um, their pizzas looked amazing. But yeah, that's a prime example. And that was just two of them out of their like food truck that yeah. they served. That wasn't even, um, like, like you say, an actual building with 10 plus staff no. in it. And they were all doing custom designs. So. Exactly. So lots and lots of opportunity. Okay, so last couple of questions then on this because really everyone should go away and start looking up local businesses yes, now. Yeah. And like I said, this is not hard to find this information on this number of businesses local to you. It, all I would do, really, really easy, is I go onto Google, we'll put your business location in, uh -huh. and then where it always has the, the, the circle of two circles and it says nearby, normally search for restaurants. Mm -hmm. But start putting other businesses in like construction, building, plumbing, ele electricians, anything that you could sell branded clothing to. Um, so for instance, uh, so that's a couple of last facts to, to hit you with, is the number of businesses with between naught and nine people in Braintree is 6,035. Okay. But if we think about it, not every single person, not just have one item branded clothing. No, probably they, they, three Some or of four. these businesses could have, yeah, three, some of them could be 10 or 15 if they're in the, like, the construction where they've got to have like, trousers, trousers hats, high vis, as we discussed, yeah. yeah. But there's over 600 businesses that have between 10 and 49 people. So really, okay. you know, really, if, if you want to kind of really kind of maximise what you do, you want to have the slightly bigger jobs. Let's be honest, because it's going to make your life easy. You got you can bulk it all together, get higher average order value, which is always a big win. 
but there's so it's just in Braintree, which is the 243rd uh, largest town or city. So there's so many towns and cities that are larger than Braintree. Oh, are you done with your stat? Yeah, it's all my stats now. now yeah. <laughs> is um, over 600 businesses that have between at least 10 people working there. Yeah, and some of them might have up to 49. So if you get a business with 49 people in times they, four minimum. Yeah, exactly. So it, it's, a, it's a lot a big opportunity just to have a really profitable business and yeah. a nice revenue machine without even having to leave your town or city or without having to come up with designs or colors and things like that because a lot of the artwork that we get sent through our easy view system yeah. are people's unique designs because they've created their own clothing brand but if yeah. you want to start making money with your heat press regardless of whether or not you have a design or yes. a brand idea that you want to bring to life you can make money with someone else's designs they send you the design that they want you to print you yeah. order it through our system and fuse it onto a shirt that's minimal effort Yes, and that's number the one the number one ways people grow their heat printing businesses. Oh, Molly's got a heat press. Why don't you ask her to do this for you? Why don't you ask, and then someone referral, else asks you. Yeah, 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 referral business, all local. So it means you can. It's much easier to get that repeat in because you can go and speak to these people again. You yeah. can see them again. They want to buy locally. You can get Build it to them quicker. You could just deliver it in your own car or van if you wanted to. So you can save on delivery costs potentially if you're going to deliver to everyone on an industrial straight on the same day. Mm -hmm. um, but there's so much opportunity that everyone needs to go away and Google what's near them because they might be, they'll be, we'll, we'll be staggered. I'm sure you were when you found out how many I mean, jobs there are in, just in Braintree. Yeah, it, it's a lot bigger than I ever thought. And despite, I think everybody always assumes that, you know, the numbers are bigger than they assume. Yeah. But that it's just ridiculous how mm -hmm. much you could and the thing that um surprised me not surprised me more reminded me more was that it's not just the worker it's how many pieces of clothing that worker needs how yeah. many different types of clothing they're going to need um even for you know the pmp show we did a t-shirt for each member of staff times four plus yeah. spares plus hoodies plus yeah. spares like that we had a pile of stuff and it, it just it adds up with before you even realize yeah. it and with all of the different technologies that there are available these days you can offer such unique placements and mm -hmm. um garments like we were saying high visits things like that you can offer the company that something a bit different that yeah. someone else might not so there's it's a sea of opportunity yeah so there's a massive massive opportunity for every single listener or watcher just to go and find business locally. You're not even having to drive to, to pitch these people. Just pick your phone up and go just on Google Maps. Up. So that is my call to action for today on the, today this week's episode of the podcast is mm -hmm. go and find that local business because it's all out there and it's a massive opportunity and it's not very hard to find these people and get phone numbers or emails to get in touch with them. No. And while we're on the topic of local businesses i think it's important to just mention the fact that you've mentioned ultra color max for smaller mm -hmm. runs in this episode yeah. um but something that people have spoken to or we've spoken to people about securing contracts or orders yeah. with people is taking an example of what you can do to them when you go and visit yes. so even if it's a case of um your local plumber or um i don't know mobile hairdresser or something like that that you could go okay this is an example of something i could do for you with your design yeah. on or you know and they're more likely to go oh okay yeah we need that oh actually we need this as well and it triggers something doesn't it rather yes. than just oh yeah we'll have just those t-shirts yeah and this is something that is um a lot of our most successful customers they call it kitting it basically means they're kitting out your customer yeah. with everything you need to so take and you can even put ultra color max onto things like cardboard boxes so you could make a whole presentation box fuse yeah. the transfer on the top you don't even have to buy stickers from somewhere else you just open it and just, go oh, yeah just pop the transfer on a box put it under the press and you could put a t-shirt and a jumper and maybe a hat in there take it to a customer and present it and say look what do you think of this it's not a massive investment for you because you've got your you gangle your transfers up together anyway. Yeah, so and you can use the same cost. box. Yeah, exactly. So there's a massive, massive opportunity to package stuff together and try and get all of the business within that yeah. company. Um, so make sure that you, when you finish this, or as you were doing it, hopefully, you were Googling away and seeing what the opportunity was for you. So that's it. That's it. Go online, it. find your local businesses, try and secure that contract, and subscribe to the Target Transfers yeah. podcast. Thank you very much for listening. We'll be back next week with another episode.